Nigeria, we have such a rich culture in this country. Rich cultures, <laughs> I should say. But for whatever reasons, we've not yet cracked how to get rich from the cultures. That's very different from what we see in many other countries where they use the unique events and locations from their culture as tourist attractions to get foreign revenue um, into the country. Which brings me to today's big hard fact. Before the pandemic, the British royal family was generating over 1 trillion naira annually in revenue for the UK. Most of which was from tourism. We talked about this two Mondays ago on the big weekend. That's cultural tourism. Those people coming to the UK because of the royal family, they're not coming to see something natural like mountains or waterfalls. They're not coming to take part in some modern activity like rides in an amusement park. They're coming to experience a piece of culture that is centuries old. People are very willing to spend time and money to travel and immerse themselves in somebody else's beliefs, somebody else's traditions, somebody else's institutions. It just has to be something unique, something memorable, something cool. Nigerian culture is unique and memorable and cool. Two weekends ago, the coronation of the new Olu of Wari took the nation by storm. We even had uh, people watching internationally. That's why I'm having this conversation uh, with you today. People all around the world watched that event on YouTube. And so many of them had such glowing things to say. I'm showing you some of the uh, sites from that day on our live stream. Uh, if Tunde can find some of them. Facebook, Nigeria Info 99.3. YouTube, Nigeria Info FM. People had glowing things to say about the culture. They were blown away by the pageantry, by the history, by the fact that this was coming from a place like Nigeria and not the usual suspects. People are always looking for something new. They, they've heard about Buckingham Palace and the changing of the guards. They've heard about the pyramids in Egypt. They've heard about the Great Wall of China. Uh, they've, um, you name it, they've heard it. But many of them were just hearing about the Olu of Wari. So imagine all the people who, after watching that coronation, started saying to themselves, hmm, maybe I should go and visit Nigeria. I want to find out uh, more, you know, about the Iwere people. Is it Iwere or Iwere? Iwere people. And their monarchy and their traditions. But this hasn't been happening in the past. We've always had these beautiful rich cultures and these cultures all have amazing events to festival in different parts of the east we've got festivals we've got masquerade processions we've got rites passages uh, we've got all kinds of fun right we've got initiation ceremonies we also have world heritage sites and yet we haven't been able to create a popular robust cultural tourism industry here like the ones in egypt or cambodia or the uk or even Ghana. Ghana makes a lot of money from tourism. You go to Ghana and they make you walk the path that slaves had to walk into the tunnels where slaves were kept all the way to the seashore uh, from which slaves were taken from, from the coasts of Accra uh, to uh, Europe and America. And I want us to answer the question, why? Why are we not doing this? I know that some of you will automatically say, Sandra, how can we do this when they are headsmen? <laughs> but uh -uh. think about this. Even 15 years ago, before Boko Haram was an issue, we didn't have much of a cultural tourism sector. So yeah, insecurity may be a factor today. But it wasn't a factor before. What factors do we have today 
that were also factors yesterday. Let's talk, Lagos. What do you think has stopped Nigeria from becoming a cultural tourism powerhouse? We have one number working, unfortunately. We're still waiting for our service provider to get our female uh, line back up. But uh, everybody, try and call us on 0700-993-993-993. What do you think has stopped Nigeria from becoming a cultural tourism powerhouse? If you can't get through via the phone lines because it's too packed, go ahead and give us a call. Uh, go ahead and uh, send us a message via WhatsApp. WhatsApp is 080-959-75805. 080-959-75805. Patrick is in Victoria Island. Hello, Patrick. Hey, hello, Sandra. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> Welcome. Go ahead. Why? Why? If I want to answer with one word, it's thoughtlessness. Okay. Thoughtlessness is the principal reason why cultural, uh, even natural tourism is not happening in this country. And then on that thoughtlessness, there are other factors, sub-factors. One of them is roads. We have very poor road network. For example, the same slave trade route is in Badagri, but there is no road to go there. Insecurity is the least of all. Number two is traffic flow. It will take you five minutes, ten minutes to drive from point A to point B when you Google search your journey in the West. Mm -hmm. But if you Google search uh, Lagos Island to a Timian Crescent, if Google tells you it's 15, uh, 15 minutes, in real time, it could take you two hours. <laughs> Number three is uh, the hotel environment. Most of the hotels that we have, mm. they do not meet they don't fall into either first, second, or third star standard. Okay. And the number four, where I will just stop, is our government is not serious, so the people are also not serious. But the umbrella that carry all of them. Is Oh, I think we lost the connection to Patrick there. I think maybe he wanted to wrap by saying that the umbrella that carries all of them there is thoughtlessness. Patrick, thank you very much for calling. What do you think about Patrick's answers? Do you agree with him? Do you disagree with him? Why do you think Nigeria hasn't become a cultural tourism powerhouse? What do you think has stopped Nigeria from becoming a cultural tourism powerhouse? Ikechuku is not a farm. Ikechuku, welcome. Uh, Sister Sandra, yeah, you can only go Number one, hmm. if you remember what happened after Ramadan 2019 in Kano, where they say gorilla cost swallow 6.9 million. Corruption is number one. Number two, oil money. Number three, our government is not investing in tourism in Nigeria. The first caller have tried. The second uh, caller have tried. So let them invest more money in tourism and they make it attract attractive. Are you hearing me? Okay. Hello. Yes, I'm hearing you. Go ahead. Another one. The main key points on things that is happening in Nigeria concerning our tourism is Boko Haram. So be the one they call them bandit now. Boko Haram terrorism and henchmen. Because I cannot go uh, Ubuntu Kacho Ranch or Kano or Mabila Plateau and the Boko Haram go kill me. So that is insecurity. That is the number one almost something that is affecting tourism in Nigeria. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Ikechuku. Remember when we started, I said you can shout insecurity, but insecurity wasn't bad 15 years ago. You know what was bad 15 years ago? Cultural tourism. Insecurity may be a factor today, but before Boko Haram was an issue, we did not have much of a cultural tourism sector. Why? 
What has stopped Nigeria from becoming a cultural tourism powerhouse? What part of your own culture do you think would be a tourist attraction if taken seriously? What part of it? What part of your own culture do you think would be a tourist attraction if taken seriously and properly marketed to the world? 99.3. Hello. Hello, my Excellency President Sandra. Good to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. My name is Azubike. I come from Olujo Shedi. Welcome, Azubike. Thank you. Coming about this, uh, talking about the uh, tourism uh, center that we, some of our community have. Mm. Like in my own uh, community where I come from, the name of state, mm. like uh, Professor Azubike, like this uh, August that just passed, just a few days ago, we have to have some culture, they call uh, Odene and uh, Irijofu. Mm. Are you getting me? Irijofu is on now. Call, yes. Or has we it finished? We have already done our own. Okay. We have done our own in August. Okay. So when it comes to that particular uh, event, mm. we, we used to have so many people that come from different uh, areas mm. and different parts of the world mm. to come and watch our in the EEG festival. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we when it comes there, the festival also gives us a lot of uh, sense of belonging, loving one or another. Like uh, that, those days, you used to see people that you used to call Ubuago. Mm-hmm. Azubike? Oh, we lost that connection. Call us back if you can. Idris is a first-time caller. Hello, Idris. Uh, good afternoon, I mean, good evening. Good evening, welcome. Yeah, th thank you. Mm. Um, thank you very much for the program air uh, right mm. now. Mm -hmm. I think my take on this is the first thing that I would rather say is our poverty nation mm. and perhaps our leadership, the leadership role, a very, very negative effect. We do not have a leader that will reposition that. Maybe because of the advent of the oil discovered. Mm. So we never pay any attention to that particular sector. We have quite a number of them in the country mm -hmm. uh, that could give us a good or that can put us on the edge mm -hmm. of tourism in the country. Mm -hmm. um, one good example is this Calabar, this slave trade center in Calabar. Mm -hmm. I was there on some certain occasion when I made pay visit there. That is a very good location. Oluma Rock is there. So all we need to do is just to make kind of uh, uh, use technology to bring this thing out. But who are those to do it? The leadership rule are not there. Each and every one of us today wake up, think of how to put food on our table, mm. meaning the poverty is driven into everybody. All we think about is how do we feed? Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Idris says we're all busy thinking about how do we feed. Osai GK on Facebook says our politicians are too greedy. Anthony Imafidon says the problem with Nigeria is that all the states in Nigeria rely on the center. They all run to Abuja to get handouts. If the states were to be independent, they'll look for ways to generate money. Kano has very beautiful historic places. Benin City has places that tourists would love to visit. I live in the United States now and a lot of people want to visit Africa, but they cannot go to Nigeria because of insecurity. Nigeria needs a total rethink. States need to look inward. Anthony Imafidon, thank you very much for your message. 99.3, hello. Hello, Sandra, how are you? I'm very well, how are you? Very yeah, well. Uh, it's unfortunate we will find ourselves in this situation. Could you turn Maybe your radio down for me? Could you turn your radio down? All right, go ahead. Uh, good oil. Mm-hmm. And then, like well, some other people are saying, leadership. The leadership is not creative. Mm. Mm, they are so docile that uh, you begin to think, where did these kind of people come from? One of your sports analysts, uh, what is her name? Uh, uh, Sarah very funny girl. He said, uh, they know they put hand for pocket, they climb ladder. ladder. <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> the issue is that we are not ready, our people are not creative. One, there is no route. Two, there is no power. 
So there is no structure that make people believe that, yes, if I'm my leader, I have to do this. If I don't do it, I'll run into a problem. Look at, okay, now look at your service provider. How many days now the female line is not working? Where things are working properly? Do you think that, that the service provider will go free for disrupting the activities? Just tell me, answer me. <laughs> well, because we don't have any good structure that will penalize people who feel that they can do anything and get away with it. This is the kind of problem we have. No roads. Uh, you understand? Uh, no, uh, no electricity, no telecommunication uh, uh, links and all that to be all those kind of interior places like we also, somebody said in Cal- talking about uh, the storage site in Calabar. Go there now, there is no, there is no uh, service. If you call from here to that place now, nobody will answer you because those structures are not there. So how do you reconcile that? Mm-hmm. Everybody is running to the center yeah, because we have lousy leaders in all our states. Lousy leaders. And I think that the issue there is that they go to the center and line up and collect money. The, the debt of our problem is not allowing states to control their resources. Let every state control her, her resources. God has blessed this country immensely. This is the biblical li- the land of Canaan. You understand? Okay. Yeah. Let, let them do something. All right. Thank you very much for calling. You know, while he was talking, I was thinking, hold on. Maybe it's the evil woman in me. But I was thinking, do you know that we could make money from our dysfunction? Imagine selling a package to people to come and experience Nigeria the way it is, with no light and bad road. Live like a Nigerian for seven days, give you a package where you can live is somewhere, you know, very rough in Lagos where, you know, they will obtain you under the bridge, things like that, you know. Because, I mean, there are people who live for that kind of thing. There are people who want to um, visit places where they'll get those kinds of experiences. It's a business idea. You could, you could, I don't know, do something with it. I was having a conversation with my partner the other day. And we were talking about, I mean, some people who enjoy, you know the people. I don't want to say, you know, which people. But some people who enjoy um, certain kinds of um, experiences. What if you sold to them um, a masquerade tour where masquerades would chase them and flog them? They would pay money for that if you package it well. You don't need road for that one. You don't need light for that one. You don't need all of that. Because I'm thinking about my mom's village. My mom is from Udi. And in Udi, they have a masquerade called Odo. Odo is a very sacred uh, sacred, uh, masquerade. Very tall, very huge. And, you know, women were never around when Odo was around. Um, You know, Odo had um, a a cult. Uh, Not cults in the way that you people think of cults, but, you know, cults in the way that there were people who had to take care of the masquerade, take care of the shrine, that sort of thing. And it was only men, right? And when Odo was around, only men were around to, allowed to be, to be, um, available. What if there was a way to turn that into a revenue generating? Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for now? Avenue. You know what? What if what? What I mean that could make money for Enugu State. It could make money for the UD local government. You know, and there are lots of other ma- uh, masquerades like that. The jelly, the uh, big ostrich, the big bird that dances and then lays eggs. These are some things that I would love to have like a week long celebration of. And people from all over the world will come in to experience these things and experience them the way Nigerians would experience them. There's even a fancy name for it these days. Some people say it's worrying, but... I say, hey, whatever generates revenue for you as a country, it's called conflict uh, uh, tourism. That's what it's called, conflict tourism. Simply when uh, countries urge their citizens to visit destinations or not visit destinations where they have, um, um, you know, tough situations. It's typically for political or military argument, you know, you know, but um, it, you can widen the meaning to include places like Nigeria where, you know, insecurity is the order of the day. I don't know. I'm just thinking aloud. I haven't given this a lot of thought, really. You know, just tell me what you think. But that's a, an aside. The main thing I'm talking to you about is our culture. Because like I said, very rich, very unique, very memorable, very cool. Very cool. 
why have we not become a, a, a cultural tourism powerhouse? Hello, thanks for calling. Hello. Thank you for calling. What's your name? So, I'm sorry, Sandra. How it, are you? It's okay. I'm fine. What's your name? Yeah, this is Alex. We really missed our line. I've missed you. Welcome. Yeah. Hmm. So I want to say, you see, tourism is something like, um, okay, let me put it this way. One of the reasons why people feel endangered in certain areas, what you just said is quite brilliant. But I want to ask you, ordinary something like they stole my wallet, you go to the police station to report. I'm talking of a tourist who comes to visit. Mm -hmm. They stole my wallet. It has all my credit cards. It has everything, mm -hmm. my passport and all of that. Mm -hmm. And you go to the police. Do you know how harrowing that experience alone can be? You see, just that is one of the reasons why some people will never visit some countries. Mm. We have a dysfunctional system. I know people have talked about security in a broad sense, like, you know, bandits and all of those things. No, I'm talking of simple things by international standards that you walk into a new country as a tourist. Could we package you know, that and sell? Could, me? could we package that and sell? Get harassed Is by Nigerian police. Nigeria police. police that we help you find your wallet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's, ask your, let's ask ourselves now. Sandra, you know these things now. Is it this Nigeria police that you go and report that they stole your wallet? Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Could we package I've that experience, an experience and sell? Nigeria police where they stole my wallet. I lost money. So quite some dollars in my wallet. Mm -hmm. Do you know that in that instance, mm -hmm. yeah, the police station yeah, in Ikeja, that one on uh, in Jiari, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, they, they were asking me to still pay money. I said, oh, God, I beg. I'm telling you that they just stole my wallet. I got nothing. I mean, it's harrowing. Hmm. Thanks, Sandra. Thank you very much for calling us. Okay, let me quickly go to WhatsApp before we take a break. We've got a few seconds before a break coming up. And on WhatsApp, um, Sandra, the factor is that there was and there is oil money to spend without putting on the thinking cap. That's Dahiru with that message. Dahiru, thank you very much. I think our problem is that all commissioners and ministers are yet to know the specifications of their job. Mercy from Ikorudu says, well, Mercy, there are some uh, ministers and commissioners whose specific job is actually tourism, right? <laughs> I mean, tourism is the is the job designation for some specific ministers and commissioners. It's not for all of them. So perhaps those ones don't know. Shem from Agungi says, in his opinion, cultural tourism is also down because we become too religious as a people. If I want to explain, it will take too long. All right. I'm sure Daddy Freeze will like that particular example. He's listening at the moment. We'll take a break, Lagos. We'll be right back. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. This is an infomercial. An infomercial. Hey guys, I have some good information from Exodus Luxury Estates. Exodus Luxury Estates is a premier real estate company that is bringing Los Angeles to Lagos. Its grand opening with our exclusive red carpet event is going to be nothing but spectacular. Join us as we tour the two popular high-end duplexes this Saturday, September 6th from 3 to 8 p.m. at the Megamon Gate of Marina. Do not miss out on this amazing experience. More conversation, more talk, more live entertainment. Featuring the Grammy Oscar DJ Mr. Mike Hidden Gray. Mike Hidden Gray, you must be the Grammy Oscar DJ. Mike Hidden Gray, what are the DJ? You know, go on the Grammy Awards and all the great DJs from all those different areas of the world. Mike Hidden Gray, you must have some great DJs.
Microfinance Bank offers investment opportunities that allow you to grow your wealth. By investing in Fair Money, you stand a chance to earn as high as 21% return on investment. What's even better is that Fair Money is offering to cover the liquidation costs of migrating your investment. So hurry, contact us via phone on 070-492-06939 or 
0800-700-1276. You can also send an email to investment at fairmoney.ng or efeosa at fairmoney.ng to start the process of migrating your investments from low-yielding returns to high-yield return investment opportunities on Fair Money. Fair Money to the moon. Everybody is talking about Nigeria's power problem. Ha! Nepa never give us light for three days now. Eh? When will this transformer be returned? Eh? What do we go do? It's a value chain where the distribution up is, is not matching up with the available power. But on 99.3 Nigeria Info, in partnership with Energy Investment Company, all on, we discuss the solutions and alternatives to your power challenges. I wonder why people these days limit themselves when there is a wide range of alternatives to choose from. Solar and battery can do exactly the same thing your generator does at a much lower cost. So, every Monday from 11.30 a.m., join Collins, Teke, Weber Boa, and the all on team on power solutions as we highlight our collective energy problems but more importantly proper solutions to these issues power solutions every monday from 11 30 a.m to 12 noon right here on 99.3 nigeria info let's talk you are listening to your number one station for talk your number one station for talk 99.3 99 nigeria info let's talk I'm Sandra S. Zekwesile. It's 5.33. Why isn't cultural tourism bigger in Nigeria? The land of a hundred kings. If I were the culture and tourism minister, I would run an ad campaign about Nigeria with that as the slogan. The land of a hundred kings. Most cultural tourists are from the West, and in most Western nations, historically, you had very few different ethnic groups. In fact, most Western European nations are ethnic nation states, so just one indigenous tribe, and therefore just one king. Contrast that with Nigeria. By one calculation, we have more indigenous languages than any other countries. Many languages, many tribes, many kings. That's a selling point for cultural tourism. Imagine a travel package that takes the tourists from Lagos, where they meet the Oba, to Ife, to kneel before the Oni, to Benin, to venerate the Oba, to Okrika, to hail, to hail the Amayanabo, to Opobo, to see King Jaja's heir, to Onicha, to greet the Obi, to Kalaba, to honor the Obong, to Boronu, to visit the Shehu, to Sokoto, to meet the Sultan, the successor of Usman Damfodio. Even if they didn't meet the kings, imagine visiting all those places, seeing the artifacts, meeting their servants, watching a Daba or two, a boat regatta. Imagine what that will do. For those same people who spent a trillion naira on the Queen of England. The land of a hundred kings. We really have something to sell in our culture. The question is, how do we sell it? And why haven't we done it before now? And no, don't call me and tell me about insecurity. Insecurity is too lazy an answer. Insecurity is the answer right now. And I agree with you that it's a big issue right now. But for years, it wasn't this bad. Why haven't we done it before now? Do you have something in your culture that you believe that people would pay to see? People could enjoy seeing? If it is packaged nicely, what part of your own culture? I don't know where you're from, but tell me where you're from. Tell me what part of your own culture you think would be a tourist attraction if it is taken seriously and if it's properly marketed to the world. What part of your own culture do you think would be a tourist attraction if taken seriously? Do you think Western tourists will pay to visit the land of a hundred kings? 
0700-993-993-993-0700-993-993-993. WhatsApp is available as well. WhatsApp is 80 I want to read your thoughts on Facebook as well. Facebook is Nigeria Info 99.3. We're streaming on YouTube, so if you leave us a comment there, I'll also take it. We've got Tony Nidimu on the line. Tony, how are you? Good to have you on the show. Uh, good evening, Sandra. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you. I'm really enjoying your show. I think I'm a first-time caller on your show. I'm glad to have you on the show today. Yes. Um, concerning your topic and your discussion, mm -hmm. um, I think the issue about tourism in Nigeria is, one, the government have plans on tourism, okay. but the execution is wrong. And we have um, greedy and selfish government officials in charge of those tourism and sector. Okay. Uh, I think what they do is somebody will want to um, bring up an initiative that will only last for the time he or she is in position. And after that, there is no continuity. And that kills that dream. It's not that they don't have any uh, initiative or any idea concerning this tourism thing, but it is all about selfishness and greed. And that is why you, you find out that whatever um, idea or um, initiative they have concerning tourism, it only ends when that um, political position ends with that person that is in that position. Mm. And that's why most times, in fact, I love your idea about these um, 100 kings of a thing. I think if these um, government officials are listening to your show, I think they, this should be an idea they should, they should buy into and uh, you know, make it a continuous something. Thank oh. you very much. You are doing great in your show. Thank you very much. You see, this is not even something that um, government needs to do. It can be, I mean, for those of you who have t uh, tourism um, organizations, you know, uh, travel agencies and stuff like that, it's something that you could package. Now, I don't know if it could work right now, considering the security situation on ground at the moment, but we're trying to have this conversation without looking at the security situation because, like I said, 15 years ago, Boko Haram was not a, was not a problem in Nigeria. The banditry, the kidnapping, the terrorism was not a problem in Nigeria. And still, our cultural sector wasn't a powerhouse. Why? Uh, let's come to WhatsApp where we have a few more comments. Abiola from Lekki says, Nigeria is not tourist friendly. We should develop our infrastructure to make commuting and residing in hotels and accommodation fun. Even as a Nigerian, it is cheaper for you to go and visit centers in Europe than in Nigeria. By the time you cost air and land transportation, now our senators will say there's no network in our towns. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Daddy Freeze sent me a message on WhatsApp as well, and he says that the reason that we're where we are is number one, religion. All our cultures and traditions have been turned evil or demonic by religion. Number two, insecurity, Boko Haram herdsmen, bandits. Number three, lack of foresight. Daddy Freeze, thank you so much for sending your thoughts in and thank you for listening. We've got Pascal in Suru Lere. Hello, Pascal. Welcome. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Sandra. Welcome. Yeah, this is Pascal. I love your show. Uh, I want to contribute for what you said. Please, go ahead. About the culture. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, me, I'm from uh, Imo State. Okay. Imo Noha, uh, precisely. Okay. Yeah, we have a culture like uh, Igwe Kala. Hmm. That Igwe Kala, then we used to get, like, every year we do Masquerade Festival. Mm -hmm. Like, as you say, if the government, you know, from Imo State can be, you know, put eyes in that culture. Hmm. Eh? Mm hmm Imagine the kind of billion they will get from there. Mm -hmm. That our mouth square, our mouth square, I didn't, I can't tell you that in this part of uh, Africa, they have that kind of culture in my village. Mm. Where you see, it, uh, when they celebrate it, they used to have some gasket. Gasket, they do that, they pour water on it. Okay. Yeah, when they pour water on it, mm. you will be seeing the water, but 
So you know that skate in a hard mm-hmm. uh, basket. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You will not see water coming down from that basket. So they will not. So they will pour water. Pour. So they will pour water yes. in a basket, and the basket will carry the water. Yes. People yes. would pay to see that. Eh? People would pay money to see that. I think. Yes. Now, if you see, they they, they do it every like. When I was small, they used to do it in different parts of village. Mm. You know, this village hosts this one. Mm. Maybe next year, another part of but the same village, they host their own mm. with the masquerade. You'll be seeing the masquerade. The masquerade, they have like eight or seven masquerades you'll be seeing different. The team has one, say, six, something you love. Mm. People from, even people from all over the world, like my village people, mm-hmm. some more, all over the world, like when they're from Spain coming back, mm. they will carry the woman. They mm. will carry their wives mm-hmm. coming. Yes. That sounds pretty cool. Pascal, yeah, thank you for, for sharing that story with me. It sounds like a pretty cool story. Uh, I mean, what part of your culture do you think we could push as uh, something that people should come and pay for? And more importantly, why isn't cultural tourism bigger? in Nigeria? That's my big question for the day. Chine Duanoha says, these things can work, but the government is is not promoting it enough. My uncle convinced his Canadian friend to come to Nigeria. I picked him up from the airport, and for three days he spent in Lekki. He spent over 500,000 naira on hotels, food, and generally catching fun. Before then, he spent Christmas in my village in Imo State. He had so much fun that he promised to come back, but coronavirus prevented him. He said he didn't know Nigeria was so much fun, and all he heard about Nigeria was insecure security. Imagine if our government were to explore this area. Do you know how much we would generate? Uh, Osai AGK says, Enugwe Zike masquerade dance in Enugu State. Hmm. Chine Duonoha also says, Oguta, Oguta in Imo State is a beautiful place uh, for these ideas. They have a rich cultural heritage and a beautiful lake as a side attraction. But the government will never look that way. You know, for a while there, during the Calabar Carnival, when Donald Duke uh, was the governor, um, we we were, I mean, at least for, for you know, Cross River, Cross River was generating some income, uh, you know, with that um, carnival before the successive um, uh, governors came in and uh, made a mess of it. But, I mean, when Donald Duke was there, um, it was something to look forward to. People from all over the world were flying into Cross River for the for the Calabar Carnival, right? The Christmas Carnival. It was a huge festival. So for a while there, you know, it, it looked like we were going to get it right. So it does need government because, I mean, like I said earlier on, if I were the tourism minister, it's an ad campaign I would pursue. The land of a hundred kings. Let's talk to Uche Nikeja. Uche, hello. Uh, Andrea, you me on the phone for long. Welcome. Unfortunately, your line is even breaking up. Perhaps call us back. I know how that can be. 99.3, hello. Hello. Welcome. What's your name, sir? Yeah. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, my name is Dodi. Dodi, good to have you on the show. Yeah, I'm calling from Ukotu. Okay. Yeah, I've been listening to the callers. Mm-hmm. Many of them have on uh, what the state should have done, what the state didn't do, mm-hmm. insecurity. I don't think that is the reason why tourism is not Okay. So I think I had the opportunity to have worked with them, uh, uh, course, which even led me to uh, to establish hotels around that uh, the Koto area. Okay. Hello? Yes, uh-huh. I remember when I was working in the church there, mm. every week we have over 5,000 foreigners that come to synagogues. Mm. And that there can be no greater uh, tourism. That was the religious tourism. Mm-hmm. And let us break it down. Say, for example, after that five, 500 people that come to synagogues, mm-hmm. let's say they come with five, $500. Mm-hmm. And by the time you, you multiply $5,000, by fire, by by that amount and by fifty four weeks in a year, you'll be having minimum of about one hundred thirty five million dollars. Mm. That is just one church. I'm mm. just using. So I know officially the mm. people. I, I remember as as an usher there, mm. we have the time we have three thousand officials mm. that the church invites. Wow. Not the one that the church did not invite. Mm-hmm. 
So Lagos has not Lagos State government did not put money in there. There was nothing in the Lagos State government. Even the road is bad. At times the man had to patch the road. And they will tell you that you need to take you need to take uh, you need to take permission for the local government for you to be able to do that road. Hmm. Around that uh, area, most of the landlords they 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 put their their tenants. You see, a landlord would just buy I pass I pass my na- my pass my neighbor generator. And what it does is it buy two foam, put those two foam in the room, put fan with a generator, and it collects three thousand naira every every night. If you want to book a hotel in the week, if you come on Thursday, nobody will give you a hotel. You will pay for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So you can imagine. So just say, God, what, we, what we need are just visionary persons. Not only necessarily government. People who are visionary can do it. So everything we blame it on government. No, 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 no. You see, just one person did that. And mm-hmm. if we have 10 or 15 persons that, that do that in, the, in Nigeria, mm-hmm. you know what the, 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 the foreign investment that will bring into Nigeria. Godi, thank you so much for calling. Well, we still need governments because there are some bottlenecks that only government can remove. Uh, Chide Gugwa says, Sandra, DJ, <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I haven't heard that in a long time. Uh, cultural tourism in Nigeria will remain a dead story as long as the stereotyped stories of Nigeria continue to strive. Let us retell the stories about Nigeria by laying emphasis on the beautiful side and not only the dark side. For me, I am a proud son of of the ancient town of Okwa, so I am an Ezibonyoka na Naswenwe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Okay, so, so it doesn't have the tonation mark, so I don't know which one is which. Sandra, I'm no longer in the University of Nigeria. I'm now in Lagos, working in Ikeja. Oh, congratulations to you, I'm very happy for you. All right, let's take a look at messages on WhatsApp. WhatsApp is 080-959-75805. Goke from the UK says, We're now deeply rooted in foreign religions, and this have marked our traditional festivals as demonic. All right. Sandra, I need to um, bring this to your notice. Policemen from Ogudu and Alakwere have started searching people's phones at, the, at that Abiola garden site, all in the name of Stop and Search. They have someone that is specialized in searching phones, and they have someone that will be watching in case you're doing any video. Hmm. Well, thanks for bringing that to the attention of Lagos. We've got uh, Upo Annual Masquerade Carnival is massive in Anambra State. Uh, that's a message from Val. Val, thank you very much. We've got someone who says, uh, this is an assignment to every Nigerian photographer, no matter what part of the country they are from, to promote Nigerian culture with their photography and more of street photography. If I am with that message there. Nigerian government needs to connect all the urban and rural area, areas, uh, area roads together and make them accessible. Secondly, that sector lacks visionary leaders or ministers. Thirdly, Nigeria's constitution needs to be amended to enable individuals or groups or private companies to come into that sector. Amichi, with that message there. Amichi, thank you very much. Uh, this one says, Sandra, read my message. Okay, let me see. Uh, Donald Duke uh, started with Cross River from Calabar all the way to Obudu. I'm partly from Cross River, Dubani precisely. My mom's family house is 20 minutes by ride to Tinapa Resort. Maintenance has always been the issue from the Calabar Carnival to the resort visits and all creativity and continuity is our issue. Inu Gap in Yakra local government still in Cross River there's the Leboku festival uh, that also serves as the New Yam festival. They need international exposure. Mm. Thank you so much, Xavier, for your message. Xavier is in Wagada. Let's take a look at other... La, 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 la. Sandra, I know many people will object to your program on Isheshe and Yoruba Cultural Values weeks ago. Be that as it may, Nigerians will run such a project down. If masquerades, God's grooves, 
ancient sites become tourist places, wouldn't we Nigerians label them satanic places? Ademo Moses with that message. Ademo, thank you very much. Well, personally, I, I'm a huge fan of um, our traditional religions. I'm a huge fan of our traditional religions, huge fan of some of our traditional practices. Some of them are beautiful. They're gorgeous. Some of them are a cake and do not belong in the 21st century. But some of them are really gorgeous. And I believe that we need to find ways to put them on the global stage, especially now that Nigeria is on the global stage more and more. We'll take a final call from Emmanuel. Do we have time for a final call? We have one minute. I hope Emmanuel is still there. Emmanuel, are you there? Yeah, good, yeah, good evening, Sandra. Good evening. We've got one minute. Yeah, thank you. Number one is a uh, lack of uh, foresight on the set of our leaders. Eh? Okay. The only foresight they have is to embezzle money. That is number one. The, number two is a uh, uh, discovery of oil. Mm. When they discover in the Niger Delta, they abandon everything. You know, even we have many, you know, attractive centers in this country, as mm. far as I'm concerned. Eh? But when I mean oil came now, they all abandon all that for easy money. Just like uh, Yahoo boys are now are just looking for money. You no, know, they don't want to stay themselves. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Emmanuel, for keeping that very short and sweet. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk to our friends who want to talk to you about computers and how they can serve you better. But that will be after the news at 6 o'clock. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili on social media, though, if you want to keep this conversation going. Let's take that break. The news is up next. Don't go away. This is an infomercial. This 99.3 Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info 99.3. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. 99.3 Nigeria Info.